Good morning. Welcome, Empower Living Community. Uh, so great to be with you as you know, we are now, what, midway through uh, the first month. Time is flying already. This is a continuation uh, as we go looking at this idea of being able to double our income. You know, it was 1991. I was two years into my first business, 24 years old. And I was working really hard. Uh, you know, I started a commercial cleaning business with a couple of hundred dollars, a used vacuum cleaner. I had two or three people working uh, with me or for me at the time. I was making probably about $20,000 a year, working seven days a week, at least, at least 10 hours a day. Uh, I would go out in the morning and uh, kind of knock on doors, ask people if I could clean their office at nighttime. In the early afternoon, I would go out and pick up supplies, send out invoices, do kind of administrative stuff, get ready for the night. And then come five o'clock at night, uh, I would start work and we would start cleaning offices all the way through till about midnight. The midnight, we would start going into restaurants and bars as they would close through the evening. And we would end really early in the morning just cleaning uh, banks on the island of Palm Beach. And that was kind of our schedule. And I was, I was struggling and I was doing what most people do. And that is, is I was listening to what everybody would tell me to do. You know, I, I was this gerbil on the wheel, right? I would get one new account and then I would lose an account. I would get an employee all trained and then they would quit. And I was taking, you know, one step forward, two steps back, two steps forward, one step back. I was really busy and my results weren't showing the effort that I was putting in. And so I was open for help, right? And, and so some people told me that I should, you know, raise my prices. And other people told me that I should lower my prices. Some people told me what I should do is I should niche market. You know, I should just only focus on doctor's offices and forget everybody else and just go after the medical field. Other people told me you can't niche yourself. You're, you know, you're 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 too young as an entrepreneur. The business is too young. You've got to take whatever you can get. Some people told me that I should be paying my employees much more than I was paying them. Other people told me I should pay them as little as possible. It seemed like everybody um, had advice and opinions for how I should run the cleaning company. The the interesting thing is is that none of those people had ever run a, a, a cleaning company. None of, those, none of those people had ever kind of run a service industry that I was running. And on one day, I, I walked into an office and I, I met my first mentor. Uh, truly, uh, I believe by divine appointment that God put Patrick Hayes right in my life. And in that meeting, you know, Patrick Hayes gave me the book, Think and Grow Rich. And he offered to mentor me through the book. I don't know what it was. I think, I think it was Patrick's belief in me that, you know, even though I was sharing with him all the struggle, every time I would share with him a reason or, or an excuse why things weren't working, he just kept seeing possibility. And I think it really was his belief in me that, that had me say yes to this incredible offer to have this this mentor pour into my life. There, there were some strings attached to, to, to that arrangement. You know, one was that, you know, Patrick said, you know, you have to do what I ask you to do the way I ask you to do it, the number of times I ask you to do it. That he would, he would mentor me, he would give me advice, he would give me counsel, he would tell me what to do. And if I chose not to listen to what he was telling me to do, then he would choose to stop telling me what to do. In other words, he wasn't going to waste his time by pouring into my life and then me not following his, his advice. The other thing that he wanted me to do was he wanted me to stick with this one book, Think, Think and Grow Rich. And, and I stuck with that book for, for three years with Patrick. 
Now we would we would study some other things. We would uh, he would turn me on to Dr. Thruman Fleet's work. He would turn me on to As a Man Thinketh and 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 Thomas Treward. But it was all one voice. If you think about it, there there was there was there was a consistent message in all of those teachings. Now. Again, this was the early 1990s. And for those of you who were around in the 1990s, in the early 1990s, you'll remember late at night, there were infomercials on TV with the superstar quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings, Fran Tarkington, and an up and coming name that most people had never heard of, a guy by the name of Tony Robbins. And Tony Robbins was launching his first book, I believe was Unleash Your Power. And Tony Robbins was having seminars all over the country and all, and all over the world where people would go for three days and learn basically neuro-linguistic programming. And, and the highlight of those three days was people would walk on fire. And, and it seemed like everybody I knew who was kind of into motivation or, you know, into personal growth was going to a Tony Robbins seminar. They would travel somewhere and come back and they would be all excited. And they, you know, they had walked on fire you know, they had walked on hot coals. They had the, you know, they had the blisters to prove it, that they had done it. Many of them, you know, paid the 25 or $35 to get the picture of them walking across these hot coals. And Patrick, Patrick pretty much forbid me from doing that. He saw, he saw me going off and, and, and walking on fire and going to these three day kind of cheerleader events, if you will, learning neuro-linguistic programming as, as a distraction. He, he really drilled into me this idea of focusing in and listening to one voice. And Patrick said, look, I don't care if the voice is mine. It, 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 you know, I'm not saying only listen to my voice. Go, go listen to any voice. If, if, if you want, look, if you've got a big hot coal problem in your life that you're trying to overcome, go and learn how to walk on hot coals. If, if you need to learn how, you know, if, if neuro-linguistic programming is going to help fix you, then, then go, go learn, go learn NLP, go do that. But then just listen to that voice. Stay with it long enough. See, most, most people don't. Most people pick up a book here and then they read this and then they read that and then they read this. And they, they just kind of idea hop. They, they, they kind of they, they, they go long and not, not deep. And, and if there's any difference kind of in, in, in my journey and personal growth, it's that I've, I've, gone, I've gone deep. I've, I've gone deep in the study of, of what it is that changed my life. I've, I've listened to maybe multiple voices in that same genre, right? I think of it as, as music. If, if we're saying listen to one voice, then let it be country music. You can listen to all types of different artists in, in country music, but listen to country music. Don't jump over here and listen to rap or classical. If you want to master country music, that's what you should be mastering. And anything outside of that's going to be a distraction, especially in the beginning. Now, I understand that there's benefits that, you know, once you begin to master maybe country music, you can begin to pick up the nuances from rap or the nuances from classical or the nuances from jazz and, and see how that could be blended in. I get that. But for most people, we just lack the, the focus, the attention, the intellectual faculty of our will. That's our ability to stay focused on one idea to the exclusion of outside distractions. One really powerful principle in my life has been this idea of listening to one voice. Taking, taking just, just one idea, one concept, and really going deep with it. So we're going to look at just a, a piece of one chunk of the Double Your Income program where I talk about this idea of, of listening to one voice. 
You might want to grab a pad of paper and a pen for this because there's going to be some questions that I'm going to ask you to write down um, through, through the video. Now, those of you who've enrolled in the program, you know there's a corresponding workbook and live calls with me every month to kind of mentor you through the program. Uh, but if you're if if you're just you know dropping in on on, on one session at a time here, um, you might want to write these questions down. Go ahead and watch this piece. I think it's about nine minutes of about an hour and a half piece of the program, and I'll I'll, I'll meet you on the other side. Let me ask you this: In the last two years, whose voice have you listened to? Like, whose voice have, have you really allowed to speak into your life? Who, who have you allowed to speak into your logic, into your belief system? See, we listen to voices in many different ways, don't we? Uh, we have CNN, constant negative news. I always like to joke about Fox News. Some would say equally as negative. Uh, newspaper headlines, what your husband or your wife says, what your business partners say, what people at your B&I or your Toastmasters group may say, teachers, lawyers, friends, doctors, maybe even ministers, people you interact with on social media, even the people you don't like or even respect. Everybody seems to get a vote in your life, into taking space into your awareness. Isn't that true? Everybody you give a voice to, you give a vote to. The books that you read, the webinars that you sign up for, the movies that you watch. So whose voices? And how many different voices have, have you allowed to influence you over these last two years? Think about that, how many voices? Imagine if you were driving in your car on a long road trip and you decided to listen to some music. Would you try to listen to you know, one station so you could really tune into that frequency? Or would you choose a selection on the dial where maybe there were four or five stations kind of bleeding over one on top of the other, where you hear little bits and pieces through static of all of them? When you're watching TV, do you typically want to tune into one really crystal clear channel? Or do you prefer to have four or five different boxes open with multiple channels going on at one time so you can't really tune into any one picture? See. If you do that, how focused are you on the one channel or the one station or the one voice that you really want to listen to and may need to listen to? See, these are important questions. I'd like you to answer this in your workbook. Over the last two years, whose voices have I been listening to? What have I been listening to from my past? Have I been listening only to my own voice? Have I been listening to the voice of my, of my past programming, my paradigm? my current belief system. And where did that belief system originate? See, once you have this list of all these different voices through books, through TV, radio, conversations, interactions, self-talk, daydreaming, internal dialogue, you have to ask yourself, what percentage of your attention do you give to each one of those voices? What percentage of your time are you spending you know, watching television? How much time do you spend reading books? One of the things that happens for me is I'm sure it happens to you because we're in a community of learners. If, if you're at all like me, what happens is, is, you know, a lot of people will come into your life and say, you know what, you should read this book, right? Did you ever get that? You know, you should read this book. You should, you should watch this video. And, and, and I get people who send me books all the time that I, you know, should read. And they say, you know, oh, you should absolutely read this. And at one level, for me, at least, it creates almost like a sense of obligation because now somebody's kind of given me a book. And, you know, we don't ever throw a book away. My goodness. I mean, it would burn in fiery hell if we ever throw a book away, right? If you're a learner. So you know, somebody gives you a book and says, you know, you should read this book. Well, I'm not so sure if you should read that book. I'm really not so sure if you should read the book that they're suggesting. I'm not so sure that you should watch the video they're suggesting. I, I'm not so sure that, that you should dilute the one voice, maybe the two voices at most, that you should really be tuning into. See, here, here's my next question. After asking whose voices am I listening to, the next question is, is why? Why am I listening to them? Are, are you listening to them because you sat down and said, you know what, I'm investing my time listening to this voice because this is the most effective and efficient way for me to grow. This is, this voice will get me what it is that I desire. Is, is that why you're listening to the voice? See, it's important for us to ask this question, why? Why am I choosing this? Why, why am I listening to, to this voice? Am I, am I listening to this voice just out of habit? Do, do I come home and turn on the TV at 6.30 so, you know, now I watch the news because that's what I do? 
do you wake up in the morning and say, okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the news and you know, I watch the morning news and the morning show because that's the most effective and efficient use of my time for me to achieve my goals? Is that the thought process? Do you do it just out of habit? See, what? why do you do it? Why are you listening to those voices? Why have they earned the right to have space in your mind? What, what have they done to earn the real estate between your ears? Are you doing this out of, out of obligation because somebody told you you should? Are you doing it because you know, that's what you've always done? Are you doing it because that, that person there said you should? If, if you haven't really done this, if you haven't really kind of answered these questions in your workbook, I, I'm going to really encourage you to do this. Whose voices am I listening to? Why am I listening to them? Next, I'd like to ask you this. What results do they have? And what results do, do the people that I'm listening to have in their lives? Like, what have they created? By their fruit, did you know them? Why are you listening to them? Why are you listening to them? What results do they really have? Have you answered these questions yet? So it's important to, to take this next step to this next level of awareness of those voices that you're listening to. Whose advice are you taking? So you're listening to people. You've made a decision that you're going to listen to them. You've looked at their results. So whose, whose advice are you taking? Are you taking action on them? You know, when you watch CNN or Fox News or CNBC or the, you read the local newspaper, what advice are they offering? And are you taking that advice? When you listen to your friend or, or, or a spouse or a partner or colleagues or the people in your networking group, are you acting on, on, on all of their advice? In the last two years, from, from this list of people whose voices you are listening to, whose advice are you taking? I'm going to suggest if you're listening to a bunch of voices and, 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 and you're not taking any of their advice or the advice doesn't serve you in the achievement of your goal, why don't you just stop listening to the voices? Like, why don't you just turn it off? I mean, if, 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 if you're not going to take their advice, why not then just tune them out? Why have the distraction? And, and if you are taking their advice out of habit or out of obligation without really thinking about it, it's definitely time to, to tune them out. I mean, if, if you're watching my programs and, and I'm giving you advice and you're not taking it, stop listening to me, right? Because what you're doing is you're diluting all the other voices that you are listening to and that you've chosen to take advice from. See, we need to focus our energy. It's one of our intellectual faculties. It's the faculty of our will. Our will is our ability to keep sustained focus concentration on one thing, on one idea to the exclusion of all outside distractions. Ask these questions. What are the results? What are the results that a person has from taking their own advice? See, lots of people, oh boy, don't we see this a lot? Lots of people read something in a book about how they can do this or how they can do that. And then they give you advice on what you should do based on what they've read or what they've heard but they've never taken their own advice. <laughs> they've never acted on what it is that they're asking or telling you to do. They've never applied the advice in their own life, even though they're now giving the advice freely to you, or maybe sometimes not even freely. They're just regurgitating something they heard or, or, or read from one of the other voices that they've listened to. And what are the results that they have in their lives, applying the advice that they're giving to other people? <laughs> Why would you ever listen or take advice from somebody who's never listened to their own advice, who's never listened to themselves and taken their own advice. The reason why we do this is we lack the confidence in our own advice. The reason why we do this is because we're filled with our own doubt. We're filled with our own uncertainty. And the reason why we have all of that, the, the, the doubt and the fear and the uncertainty, is because we haven't built a clear picture of what we truly desire. And we don't have that vibrational frequency, that energy signature to match the image that we want, that picture that we can build in our mind. All right. So there you have it. Listening to one voice. And, you know, when you when you look at that and you listen to what I just shared. It just makes sense, doesn't it? You can see how, wow, you know, you 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 get how many books do you have? that are half read, 
you know, half red is half baked, half applied, right? You're never going to be able to double your income if you if you leak energy. If you if if if, if you if, if you're not able to be committed all the way to completion. It's so critically important. And again, I'm not suggesting that you you listen to my voice. It doesn't have to be my voice. But lock into a voice. Lock into a voice who who has the results that you want, who's created what it is that you want to try to create in your life. Think about what it is that you want to create. Think about the lifestyle you want. Think about where you want to live, how you want to travel, the things you want to do, the kind of family you want to have, the the level of certainty you want, the confidence that you want in your life. Find, find, Find that genre. Find that teacher. Find that person. Find those resources. Commit a year. Commit a year to one voice. You will be amazed at the difference it'll make. Thanks so much for jumping in the program. For those of you that are coming in here in just next weekend and the weekend following for our sales uh, boot camp, we are so excited for you. We've been working together, what, since I think October. And we are so excited to be hosting um, several hundred people who are going to be coming in uh, to, to Palm Beach and just spending a weekend really building confidence, internalizing that level of certainty, ready for sales. So for those of you who are getting ready to come in, we are ready for you. We're excited. Make sure you travel safe. God bless everybody. Have a great weekend. Be well. Bye bye. So as a result of working with Paul, I have more than doubled my income. And what I love is that I've also been able to teach other people how to do the same. Paul at that time mentioned that a goal would be to double the income. And this year will come close to that, um, which again um, is just a complete mind shift. So as a result of working with Paul, I'm able to share a lot of the strategies that he's taught me with the leaders in my company. And as a result, um, their businesses are growing. Right now, I've only been open two and a half years. I have three locations. Um, This year, we will sell over $225 million in real estate. And we will have sold over 800 transactions as a company. programs, what we've seen is the return on investment for us has been six figures. I want to thank Paul because where I am today is because I took a step of faith, invested in Paul's teachings and the results mastermind, and I can look back and truly say, I have results. I have a return on my investment. biggest thing I was trying to overcome is I did not like being on video. I did just did not like being in the camera. It went beyond I just don't want to to years of resisting and not and not wanting to and it really stopping my productivity in my business. During my vision retreat with Paul, he walked me through exercises that had absolutely nothing to do with my fear of being on camera. And it was my overcoming the fear was a byproduct of something completely different that I had no idea about. It was gone, like after I got home from my vision retreat with Paul, um, the first thing I did is I went and made a bunch of videos to all the people that for years had tried to help me overcome this fear of being on camera. And I went and made videos for all, personal videos for all of them and was just joyful and said, I'm over it. I'm just over the fear. All the things that I put, I learned from Paul, I put it together with my retail knowledge and manufacturing knowledge. Um, I tell people, I try not to be cocky here, but seriously, I have no competition. If you're thinking about thinking about money, you're thinking the wrong thing. 
uh, meaning that that multiply investment in uh, return is a no brainer, no no brainer to me. If you you want to grow your business, you want to double your your business, um, don't even think about it. Just just jump in. We were on a call, and one of the members of the call had some difficulties, and Paul stepped right up. I won't say what he did, but he immediately stepped up and helped that person right then. Help see a different perspective, and talks cheap, but he backed it up with his pocketbook. So, right here, I don't know if you can see, but this is a picture that Christian took when I shared with Paul about what I had done. Ah, yes. He had that picture sent to me to put into my office with this card. I keep it all the time saying, um, congratulations on the new office, Ariel. Big love, Paul Marnelli. So who else would, who else would do that? Right? You know, and so that's, there's that, um, you just gotta love them. That's a true mentor. It's, you know, it's not a, a simple transactional process. Here's my program. Give me your money. I give you some stuff, <laughs> right? It, it goes beyond. It goes beyond that. And so, Paul Martin is my guy.